one thing that we are big advocates for, always have been and always will be, uh, is growth. That's personal growth, that's uh, financial growth, that's growth in your workplace, growth spiritually, just growth, period. It's always good when you can grow because when you grow, that means you get better, you get more advanced, you learn from the past, and you get better for the future. But when it came to Lamar Jackson, we knew, because we talked about it a lot, we knew that the Ravens had not maximized Lamar Jackson. They had not maximized his growth. And it's something that I said, a lot of y'all that have been around for a while, y'all may remember this. I said that I was scared for Lamar Jackson if he stayed with the Ravens because I was scared that with the philosophy and the way that they did things, that they would not be maximizing his potential. And I felt like he would never reach his true potential if he stayed with the Baltimore Ravens. And they kept doing things the way that they had been doing. But um, this offseason, it seemed like a lot of the philosophy changed. They got a new offensive coordinator. Uh, they like really invested in receivers in more ways than one, and they have continued to do it uh, up to the most recent signing with Laquan Treadwell. And again, like we always say, he may not have been the best throughout his career thus far, but again, if you, if you keep adding quality and you keep adding quality depth, then your worst guy is is a lot better. Your worst guy, with quotation marks. But anyway, um, with Lamar Jackson specifically, uh, I knew that he had been restricted with the offense. I, I knew that it had been a limited offense, but I didn't know it was this bad. I, I, I did not know it was this bad, but hopefully with the changes that the Ravens have made, they can really allow him to grow as a professional because after reading this article it's almost scary how limited it was but let's get to it Jameson Hensley put this article out yesterday uh, and the title of it is you become the coordinator Ravens giving Lamar Jackson more freedom to audible and when it comes to audible y'all know that's been a conversation amongst Ravens fans for a while about Lamar Jackson having more control of the offense uh there being more flow of the offense and just yeah. Let's just get to the article. It says, uh, the Ravens changed how they ran their offense against the Miami Dolphins in week two last season to get a better read on Miami's pressure package. The Ravens scrapped the huddle and allowed quarterback Lamar Jackson to make the calls at the line of scrimmage. And if you all remember how that game went, well, offense-wise, Ravens put up a lot of points. They really did. They went off. But anyway, continuing, uh, it says Jackson ran for 119 yards and a touchdown and threw for 318 yards and three touchdowns in a 42 to 38 loss to the Dolphins. But that wasn't the lasting impression. Ravens quarterbacks coach T. Martin remembers Jackson being extremely comfortable in gaining this increased freedom. Uh, I just saw the expression on his face when he came off the field. Martin said he was in a good place. Now, see what these Dolphins games, Dolphins games, because those are personal because that's they South Florida. Lamar from South Florida, but anyway, with the Dolphins game, Dolphins games are like benchmarks in Lamar Jackson's career because obviously his very first start, his first start at the beginning of, of a season, his first start, his first week one start came against the Miami Dolphins. We are, I remember 2019. Oh, it was just amazing being there too, seeing that live in person. But first start um, as a full time starter, uh, week one, five touchdowns against the Miami Dolphins. In the Dolphins. Yeah, he did that. Uh, but then, a um, couple years back, against the Miami Dolphins, and being there in person, <laughs> ooh, yikes, that was rough. But uh, it's, that start against Miami Dolphins in Miami, it, it was rough. It was rough. That was the infamous blitz game. Where everybody talk about the cut, the zero blitz, zero blitz this, zero blitz that, da 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 That's what everybody in the world uh, started to learn what a zero blitz was. Um, and that's when everybody, oh, yo, LeBar Jackson figured out this, that, da, 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 da. So then, last year, against the Miami Dolphins, <laughs> again, the, when he plays the Dolphins, they, they all, they're always big games in his career. But anyway, uh, continuing, um, Jackson will have the opportunity to get back to that good place on the new offensive coordinator, Todd Munkin. Now, here goes the scary part right here, because... Let's just read it. In four seasons with offensive coordinator Greg Roman, Baltimore primarily huddled up and ran the play that was called. Meaning, Greg was like, hey, you got play A. I, I, and I believe I've heard before that he was given like two plays and that was it. 
You either choose play, play A or play B. But this is saying, in four seasons with offensive coordinator Greg Roman, Baltimore primarily huddled up and ran the play that was called. So meaning, hey, whatever we call, that's what we are usually going to be running. We don't care what the defense is looking like. We don't care what the D-line doing, if they shift into the left, shift into the right. We don't care if it looks like somebody blitzing or not. We don't care if they play in press coverage or they backing off. The play that we're running is most likely, the play that we're calling is most likely the play that we're running. That's scary. That's scary. Because that just limits your quarterback. That limits your running back. That limits your receivers. That limits your offense. But get this. Even before we continue, the Ravens' offense, limited, they still had a lot of success over the years. So this is why we are such advocates for growth. Because it's like, if they had success over the years, now situationally, we, we know, but they've had a lot of success over the years, they scored a lot of points. But if they did that in a limited offense, in a limited offense, just imagine what they could do. You take the shackles off, man. Take the reins off of this thing. Just let them free, man. Anyway, let's just start it over. In four seasons with offensive coordinator Greg Roman, Baltimore primarily huddled up and ran the play that was called. Under Munkin, Jackson can slide the pass protection to one side if he sees a defender blitzing or switch a receiver's route if the cornerback lines up a certain way. So that's freedom right there. That's freedom. So it's... It's just such a good move. It's something that needed to have been done years ago. But the fact that it's being done, like, see, with the Ravens, this, this has been a thing this offseason, man. Um, with, with, with the moves that they've made, with the way that they really changed stuff, this is something that we've been asking for for years. Uh, pl add more plural to that. I know with the S is plural, but add even more. We've been asking for this stuff for years. Been asking them for move to move like this for years. We've been asking them to go about stuff like this for years, and they haven't. Because one one thing with the Baltimore Ravens that they have been is loyal to a fault. Loyal to the way that they've done things to a fault. They can be loyal to certain coaches and coordinators to a fault. When it's time to move on from a certain thing, certain players, certain coaches, certain coordinators, certain this, that, philosophy, they have been loyal to a fault. Because I get Ravens are all about loyalty. I, trust me, I get it. And I love loyalty. Loyalty is good. But you also got to be smart, especially when it's about your business. So you, you got to know when to move on. You got to know when to move on. You got to do what's best for business. And there were a lot of things that they were doing that just weren't best for business. And it's like with the Ravens, the way that they had been going about stuff, they didn't just limit Lamar Jackson. They didn't just limit their offense. They limited their team. They limited their team's success. They limited their, their franchise, in my opinion. But now the way that they've moved this offseason and show like, okay, we, we, we finally going to get with the times. We finally going to catch up. And I love it. That's why I've been loving it. I've been loving the way that they've been moving, man. Loving it. It, it. It's still a shock right now to this day, man. It's still a shock. I'm still like, man, this, this is my this, this, this is my favorite Raven. This is my team right here. This, this is them. I love it. So anyway, continuing. Said, uh, Coach Munkin is basically giving us the keys to the offense, really. Jackson said, and I'm loving it. Now, here goes another scary part. This is very, very scary right here, man. Whew. All right, here we go. Said in his, in his four full seasons as starting quarterback, Lamar Jackson totaled 32 no huddle plays, which ranked 32nd in the NFL over that span. 32 no huddle plays. 32. That's scary bad, man. And that is the exact opposite of the saying that Mark Ingram came up with big trust. That's not even baby trust. That's no trust. Thir 32 no huddle plays. That's, again, that's something else that we have been talking about for years. Doing more of the up-tempo offense, more fast-paced offense, more no huddle offense. Now, again, and we said this before too, nobody's asking it to be Chip Kelly style. <laughs> like, y'all remember Chip Kelly offense with the uh, Eagles, I think? When they, they were no huddle every single play, and it was like crazy. Because while, yeah, your offense is moving fast and whatnot, but if it don't work, like, 
they, the opposing team offense to get the ball back like that, and they got a lot of time, man. So, um, but we, we, we would just say that with the Ravens offense, do more of that. It ain't got to be every play. It ain't got to be every down. It ain't got to be every possession, but just incorporate it more here and there because it can add some life to your offense. It can pick it up. And with the no huddle offense, this obviously would be giving Lamar Jackson a lot more control. And it just seemed like they didn't want to give Lamar Jackson a lot more control. So that's a scary stat, though. And then this is this is probably the worst part about it. Said he had success completing 70.5 percent of his throws when not huddling. So it'd be one thing if it's like, all right, Lamar, every, every time that you go no huddle, oh, man, you do a terrible job. You don't do good. Every time you go no huddle, it, it, don't, it doesn't look good. It doesn't help our team. We always end up messing up. No, it, it's not good. But the numbers say otherwise. The numbers say otherwise. So, mm, mm, mm. again, lo love, love this offseason. Love the way that it's been going. But this is stuff that should have happened years ago. Years ago. But better late than never, right? But never late is better. Tell me time is money, so we're spending it together. Shout out to Drake. Anyway, um, we've been in that world before, but not to this degree, Coach Harbaugh said. To me, the offense starts in that world more than it did before, and I'm excited about that, and I know Lamar's excited about it. This is something that, they, again, they should have been excited about this. They should have been thinking about this years ago. Years ago. Like, you got such a special quarterback you didn't maximize them. They should have been doing this stuff years ago. But anyway, continuing. Uh, and, and then another thing, too. Like, if you would have done this years ago, like, you could have really saw who Lamar was. Because I feel like, hey, hey Lamar's been great. Lamar, Lamar's been phenomenal so far. And I feel like he's going to get even better. But he could have been even better before. If the Ravens would have really... Done more for him offensive wise. Let him open it up offensive wise. If the Ravens would have invested more in the receivers, that would have opened stuff up too. And it, anyway, continuing. Uh, he said, I think you saw the communication is probably better than what you saw last week. So we just got to keep building on it. And then uh, he's just talking about some other stuff with the contract and whatnot. But the, the gist of it, y'all got the gist of it. And, and I'll link the, the link to the article down below um, in the description. But this is, it's just big, man. It's, it's so significant. And I, I love that the Ravens are here now. So, yeah. Took them a little while. They were <laughs> moving a little slow, but yeah, they, they're here now. So we're very grateful for that. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I am very grateful for y'all. I appreciate y'all. Um, today, today uh, is a very special day. Uh, shout out to Tom Grassi, Grassi Posse, because uh, I believe today is the day that um, the video will be dropping for uh, Tom Grassi where he hit up Baltimore. So that'll be fun to watch, fun to see uh, how that goes. So y'all look out for that. Um, I, I, and I'll share it with all of y'all too. Uh, and then again, like I said, I, I will, um, I'll give my personal experience too, how that was. Um, but I'm really excited to see it. Uh, I'm really excited for y'all to see it. Um, but like I said, I'll give my personal experience to how that whole day went. Uh, Cause it was crazy. It was real crazy. Um, but in a good way, it was crazy good. Like he says, uh, chaotic good. Uh, but anyway, I love y'all. I, I appreciate y'all so much team, keep it clean. Uh, and like the Ravens' old ways are, at least they better be, we out.